This is Spooky Talk. I'm Buddy Keys. Here are two interviews I did with Barry Peltz, owner of the Franklin Cider Mill in Franklin, Michigan. I did the first interview in 2009 as Grizzly Gus, an alter ego of mine for Halloween, originally airing on TV CW50 Detroit. The second interview aired on AM 1310 in Detroit back in 2010. Each time I interviewed Barry at the cider mill, he loaded me up with free donuts, pies, and bread to take home. What a great guy. Well, Mr. Barry Peltz, where are we? Well, we're located right now at the Franklin Cider Mill. We're standing out in front, in front of our old antique window. Artifacts in that window, probably from back in the 1830s, 1835, 1840, 1870s. We're standing in front at the bike rack at the Franklin Cider Mill right now, right next to our National Historical sign, 177 years old this year. There's a rumor you sell more than cider. There, that's absolutely true. Not only do we make our own cider here, but we make all of our own donuts and if you ever had one of our donuts or walked in the back of the building you can see them being made all day long and we only serve a hot donut you'll never get a cold donut at the franklin cider mill and i don't know if people know it but there's no charge to park at the cider mill there's no charge for entry fees you can come here and look all you want best people watching you can imagine if you bring a bag of bread with you you can feed the ducks where are you going to find uh, 75 ducks that are just going to come on up and eat it right out of your hand? Nowhere! We have our farmer's market outside, and you can see our farmer's market at work. We sell Hickory Farms meat and cheeses. We give samples and taste tests of everything. We have a complete apple stand with every variety you can imagine of Michigan apples. We only buy pure Michigan uh, 100% on all products. So I just want to let everybody know that. we got a great selection out there, and we let you taste every apple variety to make sure that when you get it home, you're going to enjoy it. Well, Barry, it has been a pleasure talking to you. What a wonderful place you have here. Thank you very much, Franklin Cider Mill. Thank you. Hello, darlings. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark here. And you're listening to Spooky Talk, the talk show that's spooky. Duh. I'm at the Franklin Cider Mill with Barry Peltz. Hi, Barry. Hi, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Really good being here. Please, Barry, tell us about the Franklin Cider Mill. Franklin Cider Mill really was purchased and started as an old grist mill here in downtown Franklin, Michigan. Um, After they did some zoning changes as the years have gone on, now we're really in a corner of West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Township. We're on the corner of 14 Mile and Franklin Road, one mile west of Telegraph. My father purchased the cider mill 49 years ago. It's been in my family since. Uh, Prior to my father, there was a gentleman here who really converted the mill from an old grist mill uh, where they convert flour into wheat for neighboring farmers. The land around here got more expensive and the farmers sold the land to apple farmers. Apple farmers moved in, start growing apples and the grist mill effect kind of left with the flour with the wheat growers and when the wheat growers left then the apple growers moved in and the mill at that time was purchased in 1921 by a gentleman by the name of Bob McKee and Bob McKee converted it from the old grist mill to a cider mill in 1921 with a supply of apples from right across the street and up and down the roads. All of Franklin at that time was full of apple trees. So if you go in anybody's backyard in Franklin, you're going to find apple trees. I got four or five in my backyard right now, and we're located here in Franklin. My dad bought the mill a year before. uh, He bought the house a year before he purchased the cider mill. Well, that's a neat fact. I didn't know that about you'll probably find an apple tree in the backyards. It's a wonderful place. And you opened the Saturday before Labor Day this year, right? That's uh, September 4th? Right. This year it so happens to be September 4th. We always consistently open the Saturday before Labor Day, which this year is September 4th, and we always close the first Sunday after Thanksgiving, uh, November 28th. And on Thanksgiving Day, we're always open from 8 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. So if you got anybody in town from out of town, bring them by and see a real live cider mill in action. 
We make cider every day except Mondays. Monday we do a total cleanup on everything. We clean up every day. Obviously, this cider mill, I'm going to tell you right now, has got to be as clean as the Board of Health is. So we are the Board of Health, really. We try to set the bar for all of the other cider mills in the area. And that big new water wheel is really neat. Well, we started the water wheel uh, three years ago. We had the original water wheel here, but my father had replaced it twice, and Mr. McKee had replaced it twice. Uh, the river water that turns the water wheel, the Franklin River, which is a tributary to the Rouge River, which we all know where that goes, into the Detroit River, and then into one of the Great Lakes. So we are a tribu- we're located right on the river, so people can sit, drink their cider, eat the donuts, see a few fish jumping out the water, and just enjoy the trickling sound of the river, which is really beautiful, especially at night when it's very quiet. Now we all know, all of us know, that dogs love cheese. But you have told me in the past, ducks love donuts. Ducks are donut lovers. I mean, if you buy a dozen donuts or one donut, that duck will follow you right out to anywhere. He might follow you right to the oven, (laughs) but you might have to put a dozen of them in the oven. But I tell you the truth, I see people feeding ducks. I try to feed them bread. They don't want to eat the bread. They don't want to eat a hot dog bun. All they love are those donuts. So there are connoisseurs every year. And uh, when the ducks stop eating the donuts, then we know we got a problem. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. Barry, tell us about this ghost. Often in a cider mill, we will hear a noise coming from the fifth or sixth floor where it's just storage, where we make candied apples and other things. And we'll hear just a creak in the ceiling. We'll hear a noise. And we kind of feel that there is really an invisible ghost that goes all the way back to the original purchase of from Colonel Peter Van Every, who was with the Confederate Army, and he was actually a colonel in the Confederate Army, and he moved up here after the war, and he bought the cider mill and a piece of land across the street where he also opened up a potashery where they actually take potatoes and wheat and turn it into uh, liquor. And that's really what he started doing with the cider mill at that time, uh, the extra flour uh, from the wheat, and that he was making using across the street at his potassiary. That now is, is a, just so happens to be a, um, an office building, which is located directly across the street from us. Wow, you folks, you might see a ghost. You never know who's sticking her head out the window, but we really hear little sounds around the mill. We don't know what they are. We walk upstairs and we say, God, I could swear I heard a noise up here. We look and look. We don't see anybody. And uh, I'm look. I'm always yelling out, Casper, Casper, Casper. <laughs> I never get a reply, but somebody's got to be doing, making some noises around here. Folks, you'll have a great time if you come on out to the Franklin Cider Mill. And I just want to let everybody know that we're one of the few mills where you can actually really walk up. And I mean, reach out. And we're, you know, it's really three feet away where we're grinding our apples. And the other th- most important thing, not only do you see the, a, a grinding of apples, but we do it the old-fashioned way. And the old-fashioned way gives the apple a chance to mature as it's being squeezed. And we use eight layers of about 10 bushels, so it takes 80 bushels of apples to make one pressing at the Franklin Cider Mill. If we're lucky out of the 80 bushels of apples that we use, we might get lucky and make 100 to 150 gallons. Early cider doesn't have as much juice, so we'll get 100. Later cider, mid-season cider is 125 to 150, and we start to max out at that. But you really get a chance to see how cider was made the old-fashioned way. We do not use what they call a squeeze box, and our cider is 100% natural. So we're fortunate enough, we're blessed, that because of our customer base, we're selling it fast enough that we don't have to add any preservatives to our cider. It wasn't made last week or three weeks ago or three months ago and dated. Our cider is 100% pure, natural, and fresh. It's like a gallon of milk. You gotta keep milk cold or it sours. You have to keep our cider cold or it will become cider vinegar, which still has another purpose to it. But other than that, there's nothing you can do. You can take our cider home and freeze it. It'll stay frozen indefinitely and take out that uh, gallon or half gallon, whichever you decide. 
uh, and take that out Christmas, Easter, and other holidays, and you will love that apple cider because the season is over. 100% pure and natural. The only thing we add to our cider is L O V E. <laughs> Boy, thanks for being on Spooky Talk, Barry. Well, thank you so much, Clyde. I tell you, it's always a pleasure to be on Spooky Talk and talking with you anytime, Clyde. It's a pleasure to have you here at the Franklin Cider Mill, and we'd love to have all your listeners stop by and say hi. And uh, you don't have to make a purchase. It's just a nice outing. And I'd like to remind everybody also that on weekends, feel free to call us at our 248-626-8261 number. However, on weekends, we also have carriage rides, a horse-drawn carriage rides that'll take you all the way up to the village of Franklin, make a circle, and come back. It's about a half an hour ride. The kids will love it, and the adults will also love it, too. Thanks, Barry. Thanks so much again. Come on out and see us, everybody. Get spooky. (laughs) Get cider. Be happy. Where are we? Well, Mr. Barry Peltz. Well, Mr. Barry Peltz.